Welcome to New Politics 2021, a week-long online conference organized by the Transnational Institute and the UW-Madison Havens Wright Center for Social Justice. My name is Patrick Barrett, and I'm the managing director of the Havens Wright Center. This conference has been long in the making. It was originally planned as an in-person meeting to be held in Madison, Wisconsin, but due to the coronavirus pandemic, suffered significant delays only to be taken online, a decision we reached very reluctantly, but out of necessity in these difficult times. The conference builds on an earlier collaboration between TNI and the Havens Wright Center, which focused on the, Latin Amer the new Latin American left during the, during the early days of the so-called pink tide. This conference has similar preoccupations, but has adopted a wider geographical purview, taking into consideration not only Latin America, but also Europe and North America. In the 15 years since that earlier conference, the global political landscape has changed considerably, starting with a significant shift in the fortunes of the Latin American left, whose initial heady expectations suffered significant reversals. In Europe and the US, meanwhile, we've seen a similar pattern of ideological and electoral resurgence followed by setbacks and dashed expectations. Notwithstanding these reversals of fortune, there is nonetheless a great deal to be learned from examining the experiences of the new electorally oriented left over the last two decades. More than simply a source of intellectual curiosity, we view it as a necessity especially in light of the growing threat across all three continents posed by the right, which established centrist forces have proven not only incapable of confronting, but in many respects have served to enable. It is therefore essential that we gain a better understanding of the strategic dilemmas faced by the left, and ultimately of the possibilities and limitations, as well as the challenges and opportunities for a left transformative project in the 21st century. It's therefore essential that we gain um, the focus on some particularly crucial questions. Um, and the most important of these that have inspired the conference are those that have long preoccupied the left, but which remain very much at the center of debate. Most fundamentally, the content of the project or vision of a future society that it seeks to advance and the kinds of state transformations, social bases, alliances, and organized collective capacities and political formations needed to bring it about. It should be noted that successfully addressing such difficult questions depends on a deep commitment to democratic collaboration and dialogue and even humility. For without the insights and contributions of the great majority of us, and a recognition of our limited knowledge, we will not only fail to come up with answers, but will fall victim to the worst tendencies that afflicted the left in the past. Such collaboration and dialogue, moreover, needs to be global in character. We believe that left activists and intellectuals in various countries will benefit from increased dialogue on the promises and pitfalls of the recent experiences of the left within a variety of national contexts. A comparative and internationalist approach, assessing the experiences and lessons, lessons of different left projects will place us then on a better footing for the challenges ahead. And in that spirit, I would like to express our enormous gratitude to the staffs of TNI and the Havens Wright Center, as well as to our co-sponsors, the Democracy Collaborative, the Rosa Luxemburg Foundation, the UW-Madison Jean Monnet European Union Center of Excellence for Comparative Populism, and the UW-Madison Latin American, Caribbean, and Iberian Studies Program. I also want to thank our translators, Liz, Lala, and Isabel. None of this would have been possible without the very hard work and support of all of these people. It would also not have been possible without the more than 30 people who will be making presentations throughout the week. As you'll see, they bring with them a broad range of experience, knowledge, and insights from a large number of different national and regional settings. It's important to say, however, that not everyone whom we invited was able to participate. And that one of the consequences of that is a regrettable racial and gender imbalance. Unfortunately, this seems to be a persistent problem, 
calling for an even greater effort to resolve it going forward, especially if we see this as a fundamentally collaborative enterprise. Uh, it's also worth noting that this conference isn't truly global, given that our focus is limited to Europe and the Americas. Having said all that, we also want to recognize the enormous long time contributions or long term contributions of two towering figures who sadly are no longer with us, namely Eric Olin Wright and Leo Panitch. Eric, of course, was the founder of the Haven Center, which now also bears his name as the Haven's Wright Center. And Leo was the longtime co editor of the Socialist Register and the very first person we invited to the conference is his very enthusiastic response, seeing this as he put it as a terrific initiative was confirmation that this is a worthy and necessary endeavor. We'd therefore like to devote some time now to tributes to both Eric and Leo. For Eric's tribute, I wanna turn it over to Pete Roman, a former student of Eric's and a colleague of mine here at the center who in fact has been truly essential to pl the planning and organizing of this conference. Hi everyone, um, thanks very much. Eric died on January 23rd, 2019 and his presence is sorely missed today, just like it is every day, uh, as well as being a world-renowned scholar and the founder of the Haven Centre, which has been the co-organiser of this conference. His life was dedicated to struggle for social justice and his intellectual ambitions always had this in mind. His class analysis project, ran for years assessing the class structure of modern capitalist societies, always with the intention of working out the alliances that could be formed in order to transform capitalism. The Real Utopias project analyzed egalitarian institutional designs and the prefigurative forms of politics that could form the basis for a socialist society. And his final book, How to Be an Anti-Capitalist in the 21st Century, started to seriously broach the question of strategy from a theoretical uh, perspective. And this was the main area of focus that he intended his work and his research to move on to. So when we first discussed the idea for this conference, he was incredibly enthusiastic. He was really excited about talking to people from across the world about how they were organizing, about the new kinds of parties they were building, and about how activists on the front lines were thinking about strategy. And as well as learning from them, he would have shaped this conference. He would have been at the heart of the event throughout this week and his ideas would have permeated every part of it. But I would like to say that even though he's not here, his ideas have still fundamentally shaped the politics of the event. Um, Eric was an incredible thinker, uh, a mentor to so many, a wonderful director of the Havens Centre, now the Havens Right Centre, um, named, named in his honour. And he was also the most wonderful human being. He is missed more and more each day. And that is particularly poignant today at the start of this conference. Thanks, Pete. Um, so for Leo's tribute, I'd like to turn now to Steve Maher, the assistant editor at Socialist Register where Leo was the longtime co-editor. Yeah, uh, thanks Thanks for having me here to, to, to just quickly mention uh, a remembrance of Leo. It's, uh, it is a very exciting initiative, despite despite the circumstances of my attendance. It is a very exciting initiative, and um, you know, Leo Leo left. One thing that's become clear since Leo's passing, uh, just just a, about a month ago, is how big his shoes were, and how many different projects and different initiatives he was constantly involved in throughout his life and up until his final days. Um, you know, me, Greg, uh, Albo, Sam Gindin, and and many other of Leo's friends and comrades have been uh, all kind of scrambling to, to fill all of us working together, uh, the incredible amount of energy that, that he was able to take on just as an individual is unbelievable. One of the reasons Leo would have loved this conference, and I, I, when Pete told me, Pete Ray, uh, Raymond told me that uh, Leo was very excited about it, I wasn't surprised because one of the most important things to Leo uh, throughout his career was, was the dif distinction between just academic work and engaged socialist scholarship. Um, he always drew this distinction, and, and this is exactly the kind of very high level and engaged discussion uh, that Leo would have thrived on and, and would have absolutely loved. Um, uh, he's missed every single day. I, I, you know, the, the seizure of the Capitol building, uh, you know, I, I, I think three times that day, 
sent Leo uh, an email or started to compose an email to Leo, you know, asking him his thoughts, uh, trying to raise a point we had debated uh, over the past couple of months or, or some such. And, and it was really hard to, to feel that absence as I'm sure it was for so many people. His mind was just absolutely incredible and served as a guide for so many of us, especially in such difficult uh, and uncertain times. He did until the last days of his life, continue to debate and read and argue and, and stimulate discussions on email and on, on Zoom. Um, and he was really, really worried about the rise of far-right authoritarianism, but he was also inspired by democratic socialism, deeply inspired by the, the resurgence of democratic socialist politics, especially in the US and the UK, but all around the world. He was, he was engaged in, in the search for a new kind of politics. Um, which he, which had guided, in his opinion, the, the Socialist Register since it was founded by uh, Ralph Miliband in the mid 1960s and John Saville. Um, and it was present in his last book, This Search for Socialism, which is uh, Search for Socialism, which is his last book with, with Colin Lees, uh, which is about the Labour Party, the, the left in the UK and around the Labour Party from Tony Benn to, to Jeremy Corbyn. Um, and it was present in his second to the last book, uh, which uh, Sam Gindin and I co authored with him. Uh, the socialist challenge today. Um, and the, the, the fundamental direction that Leo was trying to, to, to move in or trying to open for politics internationally was to find a new form of left politics that would not fall prey to the old, uh, the limits of the older left style politics of, of the Leninist parties and also uh, the, the, the por sus limitaciones y que pudiera transgresar eh, esos limites como bien escribió en Socialist Register en su uno de sus últimos ensayos. También escribió extensivamente sobre el imperio estadounidense y sobre la importancia uh, as well as in, in the global north. And uh, so he would have loved this conference and, and even just just hearing the, the 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 range of panelists that are going to be speaking here and the topics I can only imagine how he would have uh, just It, it eaten this up. Uh, and, and so just, just being here now uh, really makes me miss him uh, even more. So uh, with that, I, 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 you know, I'm glad to be here to remember Leo. And I hope you guys really hope the conference goes well. Thanks very much, Steve. And thanks to Pete as well. I mean, obviously it's, it's sad and I'm, the, these two towering figures um, left us uh, in recent times. But uh, as we've said, um, They're certainly here in spirit and uh, we'll be thinking about them. All right, well, on to a little more mundane matters, uh, just a bit about the conference format, uh, just to explain what we'll be doing over the course of the next uh, five days. There's, there are going to be two panels per day, um, each of which are roughly approximate, or approximately two hours in length. Um, there will be panelists uh, ranging from two to four actually, and each panelist will be given 20 minutes to make their presentations. And then depending on the number of panelists, we'll have between 40 minutes to an hour for general discussion. Uh, I also want to mention that at the bottom of your screen, you'll notice there's a, a chat box as well as a quote unquote questions and answers button. So you should feel free to introduce yourself in the chat who you are, where you're from, and if you want, uh, what you hope to learn from the conference, what motivated you to join us today. Um, and if you have questions during the session uh, or require any technical assistance, you should use the Q&A tab. And we'll do our best to assist you and pass your questions on to our speakers during the, the general discussion portion of the, of the session. So thanks very much for joining us. Uh, we, we look forward to what we, will ex we expect will be a very stimulating week of uh, conversation and discussion. Um, our first session, which is titled Constructing a New Politics for the 21st Century, will begin shortly at half past the hour. And I say half past the hour, obviously, because the participants in this conversation uh, in this conference are actually scattered across the globe. So we're conscious of the fact that people are in different time zones and we, we decided on scheduling it when we did so that it would be uh, convenient for as many people as possible. So uh, um, again, join us at half past the hour, which is only um, 12 minutes away. We look forward to your participation. Thanks very much.